So in this video, we won't get into the mathematics of the Kalman filter at all. This is just the very basic description of how you're going to handle the inputs from the robot and what the Kalman filter is going to do for you and what kind of output that it's going to give you. But even before you start saying what the Kalman filter is, there's a basic, more basic question of how are we even representing this data. So if you have a robot, let's say we have a robot, it has two wheels here and it has a laser that it shoots at the wall, it's a range finder. It measures the distance to the wall, okay? When the wheels turn, it, they turn an optical encoder, it counts the number of degrees that the wheel has turned. This is a laser range finder, it shoots and it detects how far away the wall is. So this has two different sensors that it can use to figure out how far away the wall is, right? The robot, it can move back and forth. All right, let's say this is the direction of increasing x. Here's the origin, zero. All right, this is a wall at a certain position. This is x. Okay. Okay, so you have a robot here, it has wheels, it's got a laser range finder, so it shoots a laser out here, bounces it off the wall, it can, so it can tell about how far away this wall is. It's also got optical encoders on the wheels, which allows it to count how many degrees the wheels have turned as it's moving, right? So at any time, it can estimate how far away the wall is based on two things. Um, one is what these wheels tell it how far it's gone uh, from the previous state and also whatever this range finder tells it okay well the range let's say the range finder measures this and it says um, it's one okay so it's one foot away this measurement is supposedly one here's the deal all we get back from the range finder is a number. It could be like 1.2 or whatever. 0.9 something. Now if you start talking about Kalman filters, they don't use just a number, right? You gotta have an actual distribution. So you're expecting something like this. So assuming your range fi finder is calibrated correctly, uh, and assuming that this distance really is one foot, what you're going to get back from the range finder is actually something like this. I'm drawing a Gaussian curve here. Okay? And it has a certain standard deviation. Now, if the standard deviation is really high, You've got a low grade range finder and you're going to end up with values kind of like this. Uh, this is a probability distribution. This would be 1 right here. Again, this would be 1. So the values are centered around 1. This is with a good range finder. This is with a lower grade range finder. But it's more spread out. Now you can characterize how spread out this is with the variance. And the Kalman filter is able to actually use this variance to figure out how much it's going to trust the range finding sensor. Let's say the robot's going to roll forward, okay? And it's going to roll forward two inches. So two inches forward. There we go. Now, when that happens, uh, the wheels turn a little bit and you're going to get a new reading for the estimated position based on how much the wheel turned around, right, with the optical encoder. Okay, so let's say this is 2. Reading the, the optical encoder, again, it's going to be centered on 2, assuming that it's well calibrated. If it's a good encoder, it's something like this. Now you're just going to get a number from it. You might get 
2, you might get 2.1, you might get 1.9, you might get 2.2, whatever. This gives you the distribution that describes what kind of numbers you're going to get out of it uh, when, after it rolls for exactly 2 inches. And if you have a lower grade sensor, like we said before, then you're going to have a curve here that's more flat. Looks more like that. Right? So there's significant probability that you could get something out here. Uh, according to this prob probability distribution function. So, here's what happens, and here's why the Kalman fil filter comes in handy. When the robot moves, this encoder is giving you one value, the rangefinder is giving you another value. They're both imperfect, so they're not going to match. However, you can make an estimation of where this guy actually is, and what the Kalman filter does is essentially give you uh, an optimal blending of those values, because you've told it the actual standard deviation of your rangefinder and the standard deviation of your encoder measurements, and it's assumed that you know those. Um, now how you would get those, maybe the manufacturer would tell you what the standard de deviation is for the rangefinder. Maybe you figured out before what the standard deviation is on the optical encoder, and you'd, you'd have to do some experiments, um, tell it to move a certain amount forward, and measure, say with a ruler, how far it really went forward. Right? You'd have to do that a bunch of times. Suppose you did that a hundred times, or just to check how far it goes for five inches, and then you could measure the standard deviation of your experiment and figure out what that standard deviation actually is. Uh, you could do the same thing with the range finder. If you didn't know beforehand, you could actually measure the standard deviation of it. And it, it could actually change. The standard deviation could be more when it's further away, if it's less accurate when it's further away. I mean, at least for this discussion, we can just assume that the standard deviation is the same at any distance. You, you don't have to assume that but we can do it for this discussion. And so what happens is the Coleman filter figures out a way to blend the two outputs to give you the best estimation of where the robot really is. So suppose that the range finder gives you a signal like this, um, where it has a relatively low standard deviation, whereas your optical encoder that's measuring how far, far the wheel went is giving you something like this, more spread out, it's a, it's a like, less accurate reading. You're going to get one number from here, it's going to be one number for your optical encoder, and you're going to get one number from here from your rangefinder. The Kalman filter will, will take into account the fact that this number this individual number can be trusted more because the standard deviation of this sensor is lower. And it will take into account that this can be trusted less because the standard deviation of this sensor is greater, right? So it'll weight this more and it'll, it'll give you the optimal reading for where the robot most likely is, which will be another Gaussian distribution, right? And it, if the filter is very confident about where the robot is located, again, it's going to have a sharp peak and a lower standard deviation. If the filter is not so confident about where the robot is located, its output will be a broader Gaussian with higher standard deviation.